Hi, my name is Leslie Koenig and I'm an emergency medicine physician. This is a video that you can use right now for anxiety and in it we talked about the coronavirus and how I used it today to help with my anxiety. Um, I'm interviewing my tapping coach, Dr. Jill Weiner. She was a hospitalist for many years and now runs a business um, doing meditation and tapping. I had no idea what tapping was when I first met her, but after I found this technique where I just jumped in, didn't know what I was doing, and immediately felt like it had huge results, and she talks about in this video why that is. We go through a step-by-step um, -step process of how you can use this technique at home, and you can even go through the video and follow along with me and Jill so that it can help you with your anxiety right now, really fast, in a totally natural way, no drugs, and you can just do it right from home without having to leave the house. I hope that this technique works for you and that you check out my upcoming workbook, Emergency Anxiety, on standoutdiabetes.com. Uh, just type in your email and I can send you some information about the full workbook. Right now it is 78 pages where I have about 10 different techniques that are similar to tapping and beyond, um, along with worksheets that you can use to uh, track your progress and help you along your anxiety journey and just pretty much anything else you have to deal with. It's not even just about anxiety. It's about just whole body betterment. So I hope that this is useful to you and helpful. And uh, I hope to talk to you soon in another video. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Um, so I am super excited to have you here today, Jill, um, to talk about tapping. Um, which I am uh, writing about in my new anxiety workbook. And um, I thought tapping would be wonderful to have considering how much you have helped me and that you introduced it to me. <laughs> and that, um, you know, we just did a session and you've been amazing and you have been such a wonderful teacher with your meditation, um, but also with the tapping, which I had never heard of until you offered it to me. So I was wondering if you could tell me um, how you heard of it and what got you into it. Um, and kind of what it is. Sure, absolutely. Um, thanks for having me, um, for interviewing me. I'm, I'm really excited to be part of it. So tapping, and also so glad that you uh, love doing the work that we do together. Um, tapping is also called the Emotional Freedom Technique, or EFT. And I first heard about it, I was teaching my meditation course at a conference for women physicians, and the guest speaker in addition to what I was delivering, this, this psychologist and psychiatrist from the VA came and spoke to us about tapping and some other techniques they use to work with veterans dealing with their PTSD. So it was presented to me in a very in, inside the box context uh, of you know, very clinical use for, for patients that uh, many doctors like you and I have worked with, the, the veterans. Um, and I then heard about it and I thought it sounded great. I um, bought their little workbook thought about doing some training with them, but it never worked date wise. And then I kind of let it slide. And then I met a woman who's a tapping coach here in Atlanta where I live. And she is, I had been going through some, some personal stuff that had really kind of hit me hard. And I did one session with her and I felt like myself for the first time in months and with, with one, one hour long session. And I felt like she was just like reading into my soul and helped me make so many huge connections for myself. So I worked with her for a couple years and then decided to get certified myself in tapping. And so now I do that uh, with my clients, some of whom are my meditation students and some are not. And I work with them one-on-one. -on -one. I've also created uh, an online course, a couple online courses. One is a very short intro to tapping course. Um, how to build your own tapping sequence, and one is a tapping for physician burnout course that I that I created. It's kind of a choose your own adventure, depending on the emotion that you're having about burnout that day, because it's very multifaceted. So yeah, so that's how I came to it. Um, did you want me to talk a little bit about what what it is? Yeah, yeah. So when I first saw you and did my first session, I walked in literally knowing nothing, and um, I guess I was really skeptical. I don't know if I ever told you just how <laughs> totally skeptical I was. Cause I'm like, how is this like, what is this? Like, how does this help me? It looks um, crazy. Yeah, it is. It, it <laughs> is. I, and you know, I, I walked into it being like, well, I don't know. I mean, I signed up for this just uh, because I was open-minded and, um, 
I, it was amazing how much it worked for someone like me. And, you know, I mean, I'm very closed off, you know, it's hard for me to name my emotions sometimes. And then in the first session doing this, I just felt like I just blowed open, just like the walls just, just blasted out. And mm -hmm. suddenly I was able to be like, oh, that's what I'm really feeling, like making all those connections. And how does that work with just doing like karate chops on your hand? Like, yeah. <laughs> why does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and you're so right. People, I mean, people will tell me like one tapping session feels like a year of therapy because oh, you yeah. can just yeah. completely decimate this belief system that you have set up, like systematically decimate the things that you're, you're, believing in your life that are leading you to unhappiness and, and to not functioning at your best. So um, basically it's using acupressure points. So the same, some of the same meridians as used in acupuncture in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, we focus mostly on, on these points that are on the face and the chest and then one on the hand here, the karate chop point like we were talking <laughs> about. Um, by, by doing pressure on these points rather than, and, and acu, this is not a replacement for acupuncture. It's a, it's a very different modalities, but they just use the same meridians. And these meridians are, are where are your energy flows through your body. And they're, they're well validated. This isn't like hokey stuff. This is actually scientifically validated. Um, so by tapping on these points, and as you actually do the tapping, you're going to say and repeat things out loud that are the negative things that you're thinking and feeling. You're not trying to sugarcoat anything. You're wanting to like get in as dark and deep as you can because by saying those things as you're tapping, it sends calming signals to the brain's stress center, the hippocampus and the amygdala. It tells the hippocampus, like this isn't a stressful stimulus. This hippocampus normally decides like anything I see in front of me or feel, is this stress or is this not stress? So it's taking something that was previously stressful and telling the hippocampus this is not stressful. So then it doesn't set off the fight or flight response. Uh, it connects to the amygdala in a different way. The amygdala is the part of the brain that sets off fight or flight when you start being a crazy person and, and having a stress reaction. So it reprograms how your brain perceives different stresses and traumas. So it's not going to make you forget that they happened. But if you have PTSD, it's going to keep you from being re-triggered and re-traumatized if, if done correctly. And if you're having good results with the, with, the, with the work, it'll keep you from being re-triggered and re-traumatized every time you get exposed to a loud sound. Or if you go to the parking lot where you were attacked, it's going to, it's going to no longer make that a traumatic, traumatic effect for you or a traumatic uh, event for you. Okay. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. So... I mean, I'm a combat veteran and, you know, was in Afghanistan and thankfully I don't have PTSD from it, but I, some people I was with do have PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, and when we tap, it's not based on my combat experience at all, but I still get so much benefit from it. But I think, you know, the way you're describing it now with um, um, sending that stress response so that you're able to open to it, I guess, is how I'm hearing it. Yeah. Um, that's exactly how I feel when, when we're talking about all these things, when I'm doing tapping and, um, just going through past experiences and being able to look at it without that fight or flight response is such for me, that's a big barrier because I don't want to look at that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, it's scary to, to look at these things that, um, you hold so close and you don't want to look at them. You know, you want to pretend they don't exist. It's something oh, it's not there. And then with these tapping, I'm able to, to, um, yeah, just, just take a different look at it in a healing way. Yeah, exactly. And, and you brought up a good point. This isn't just for trauma. Mm -hmm. I work with clients on their relationships with their, with their spouses on, on chronic and acute pain, uh, if there's a big decision to make, I just a friend of mine just got this huge job offer to be a chair of medicine um, at a new hospital out of out of Chicago. Like she would have to move, and we tapped on whether she should take the job because she wasn't sure. So it, uncertainty, making decisions, uh, traumatic events, phobias. So there's so many things you can tap on. I've got people whose uh, kids are leaving for college; they're empty nesters. So there's so much you can do. Um, 
And you're exactly right. I love the way you said that. It, it makes it less stressful to address that issue. So even if it's not about a specific trauma, it's still allowing your brain to open up. And, and you can use it to manifest good things too. It's not just about getting rid of negative things. You can actually use it to bring a lot of positivity into your life as well. Yeah. So maybe talk more about that. So we tap on things just to uncover it and to um, talk about it in a way so that you don't trigger that fight or flight. So then how do you kind of back that up with something good? So, you know, in my sessions, we talk, you know, you infuse the positive. Can you talk yeah. more about that? Yeah. Sure. So if we started tapping and, and, and basically as you're tapping for people watching, you tap on a point here, you say some things. And I generally, when I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, it's like a call and response. I say something in first person as the person I'm talking to based on the history I've gotten from them. And then you tap through these points all over the face um, and they repeat back. And once, if, if we started to do that while they were still all jacked up and upset about something, the brain's going to reject it. Because if you're like, I'm happy and I'm filled with love and yeah. I have this situation and I recognize my own, no, the brain's like, uh-uh, I'm stressed, I'm panicked. So the, the, yeah. the, yeah. if you can't tell a stressed physiology what to do, it's not going to listen. So the idea is you tap to get the negative out and we actually follow the severity level of an emotion. So we generally do this based on an emotion that you're feeling. So if you're feeling anger or frustration or resentment, let's say it starts at an eight out of 10. We'll tap a little bit and then we'll check in. How are you feeling? What came up for you? Did it come down? Did it stay the same or did it go up? Sometimes it'll go up because it's, the tapping will bring up more. Now that I think about it, I'm, <laughs> this, 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 this is making me mad too. But then it passes and the numbers come down. Once the numbers are down, like a two or a three, that negativity is not as intense. And again, we're happy to have the negativity. We want to embrace it so that we can clear it. Once that negativity is lower, then you can start to infuse some positive and talk about the mindset, mindset shift and feeling all that, you know, all that negativity leaving your body and, and, and other things like that. Um, you can also use tapping totally specifically on its own to manifest things. There are these different um, algorithms you can use, um, different, almost a different script where you talk about, you picture a scenario that you want in your life, like an outcome that you want. And you talk about how that, what that looks like, what that sounds like, how that feels in your body. And you do some visualization, visualization with that. So that's kind of an advanced technique, but that's also something you can do outside of the whole, I'm feeling negative, let's get rid of it and then tap in positive. You can also use it completely separately to almost like create a different reality for yourself, using it as, as a tool to do that. Okay. Okay. And then in this past session, so I've been doing a bunch of tapping sessions with you. And this past session, I was like, I just started ranting and you're like, oh, and this is a thing, ranting. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this is great. I can just sit here and just like, blah, 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 blah. And I just, um, with no script either. And that was also freeing as well. Um, maybe just talk more about that. Sure. Um, people will, will say a lot. They'll say, oh, it just, it just feels really good to get this out, to say this out loud, even as we're just because people will come to me with their darkest, deepest secrets, like, you know, like, like talking about being molested and, and, and abusive parents and all these things um, and, and issues with their husbands that like no one knows about and all this stuff. And, and so some people feel like it's just a relief to get it off my chest. It's that plus doing that when you're tapping that works. And so sometimes we follow a script, but sometimes I'll check in and I'll say, how are you feeling? And the person will just start being like, I don't know, I'm still having all this, this, and I'm, this is coming up and I'm thinking about this and all the way it's affected my life. So I'll just say, let's keep tapping. So instead of it being a call and response, you're just tapping as you're saying these things that are making you crazy and you're tapping and tapping. And then kind of once that settles down, then I'll say, okay, let's pause and, and kind of reset again. So even processing things without it being a formal script or the general, without it being the usual way that we do tapping, you can do this rant thing and it, it can work really well, but it's important to get as much, as much benefit from it, not to just let yourself rant, but to do it while you're tapping. Cause that's, that's where it's really going to shift your, your brain connections relating to the stress. Okay. And then, so it, you know, whenever we start, you kind of ask me the emotion and I tell you what we're going to tap on or what I feel like. And I'll, sometimes I don't always know, but you definitely helped me with that. Um, and then you kind of, ask me a number. So I give you the number. Mm -hmm. And then as we go, I notice it kind of goes from like an eight to like a six to a four to a two. 
Um, and then um, usually I journal afterwards because I usually have some kind of like aha moment, you know, in the session. And sometimes it takes a bit and I don't always know I'm right up on it until I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I kind of like hop this fence or this barrier I didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I get this aha moment. And then almost, I almost get more questions. So I just, I Google about that later. Or I, I journal about that later. <laughs> um, so what do you, is, is that kind of your typical format for your goals through every session? Yeah, I mean, I start working with every client. We actually do set goals. What is your perfect vision of your life? And we set that in, a, in using specific language. It's very positive and very present tense. So you'd say, not like I don't have issues with eating and I'm not unhappy with the way my body looks, but I embrace the way my body looks, you know, in all shapes and sizes, something like that, you know, so we set goals and then, yeah, we find out what's bothering you and people kind of just share their story for a little bit. And then we pick the most, the most intense emotion that you're feeling in that moment. And it's, some people have a hard time identifying the emotion and that's okay too. You don't have to do that. Sometimes it's like, I had this event happen to me last week. I don't really feel that right now, but it was a pretty big deal last week. So we can tap on it last week, even not, not having to be as scientific about tracking the level, but generally it's what emotion are you feeling? And we'll go. And sometimes if, if, if it feels stuck, there's something that we're not uncovering. There's either a different angle or the person is having some resistance to letting go. Mm -hmm. And so then sometimes it'll be like, I got nothing. I'll be like, even though I've got nothing and I'm feeling resistance to this process, I love and accept myself. And then we'll tap on that resistance. Um, but generally what will happen is people will like have this huge release of emotions. Maybe there's some tears and then there's a yawn or there's a sigh that I, I ask you to sigh intentionally, but sometimes people will sigh automatically. That's a sign that something has shifted. So I'm also looking out for that to see when people yawn or when the tears come or when they um, take a deep breath and just like, Ooh, you know, like that feeling. And then they're like, I feel light and amazing. Someone I worked with yesterday said, I don't know. It just got brighter in the room. I don't know. Like, oh, wow, that's really cool. But it just got brighter in the room. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so there is, if it's not moving through fairly quickly, it's, there's, there's something more to it. And that's part of what I'm trained in doing is helping dig around a little bit, but people can do that at home on their own as well. You just kind of have to get really real with yourself. Yeah, I think that for me, it would have been really hard to do it on my own to start with. But I know that there's plenty of people who um, are like, this sounds like something I don't want to pay for right now. I just want to try it and see if it works yeah. on my own um, before I shell out however many dollars. Um, so, and I know that you have an online course um, and then you have your, you know, sessions like this. What yeah. would you tell someone trying to just get into it? who's not really ready to spend the money, but wants to try it? I think there's lots of different options. First, if you're curious about trying in person, but don't want to commit to a whole package, you can do like a one session deal. It's a little more expensive, but if you, if you fall in love with it, I'll apply that amount to a package. But if you're just like, I want to explore privately at my own home, go to YouTube and type in the search for whatever emotion you're feeling. Tapping for anxiety, tapping for anger, tapping for travel phobia, tapping for you know, obesity, weight loss, and, and you'll, there'll be a script, something that you can do. Um, in my online course, like the, the, the really introductory one, it's $49 and you get a script on how to tap on your own and how to fill it in and, and, and create your own tapping script that you can use for any emotion and also instruction on how to do the positive. So I think you're going to put something similar to that in your mm -hmm. materials that, that, that um, go along with your anxiety book. Um, so you can use that as well, but YouTube has a ton of different, um, and, and my own YouTube channel. So if you go to, it's, um, Jill Wiener, MD, the meditating doctor. So if you go to my YouTube channel, there are some, um, you know, free resources on there as well. A lot of them relate to physician stuff, but I had one for feeling lonely around the holidays and, um, and, and I think, you know, other different topics that don't guilt feeling. I do a lot of work around racism. So I have one that's about feeling guilt about racism. So, so lot, lots of, you can, whatever, the sky's the limit on what you can tap on and you'll find free resources on, on YouTube if you look for them. Okay. Um, so maybe we could go, go through the different spots and maybe you could walk me through like a tapping session on 
let's say anxiety about leaving your house in the midst of a coronavirus thing. Perfect. Pandemic. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. And I think, that. yeah. So we'll go through the different meridians and um, maybe Leslie, you can just like tap along with me so people can look at me and you doing it. The thing to remember about the meridians is that you can use either hand. You can switch hands. You can use the right hand on the right side of the body, the right hand on the left side of the body, the left hand on the left side, left hand on the right side, switch it up, do it like that, do it like that, however you want to do it, both hands, one hand, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, you want to do five to seven taps at least on every point. And the points are pretty forgiving. So you don't have to be like a scientist in terms of how accurately you're doing it. Yeah. And you don't have to be like, okay, it's like, wait, like <laughs> here. Um, so it's pretty forgiving of a process. And so we, the first one is the karate chop point. Okay. And that's just kind of the part on your hand where you would like, you know, mm -hmm. break wood if you were into doing that. So you tap here. And obviously with this, I, I can't use both hands, but if you wanted to do it this way, that's fine too. Okay. Um, and then you go to the top of the head. So kind of right at the top in the, in the middle. And then you do the inner corner of the eyebrow uh, where the eyebrow ends and meets the top of your nose. And that can be either side too. So I, I, for whatever reason, tap with my second and third finger, but you can tap with one finger if you want to. I just do two. Mm -hmm. And then you do the outer corner of the eye, like your temple. And then under the eye, under the nose, the chin, like kind of right under the lip. And then you do this point on your collarbone. So if you go to this notch right here okay. uh, in your uh, chest bone, you go down an inch and over an inch. And that's the area where you tap. Some people like to tap like with their fingertips. I like to make a fist like this and like, like Tarzan kind of beat on my chest a little okay. bit. Okay. I cross over. So I do it with my right hand on my left side, but you could do it here if you wanted oh, to. Okay. It's just yeah. like, I can rest my arm. I tap a lot. So I don't want to get like a tapping over his <laughs> injury. Um, so you tap here. Okay. And then the last one is under the arm, like where your bra line would be. So um, if, you, if you wear a bra, if you don't wear a bra, it doesn't matter. Same spot, like right under here. And so you can reach across and tap like that. I like to use the like sort of jelly roll part of my fist. If you're a doctor and you use a reflex hammer, you'll know what I mean with this like <laughs> jiggly yeah. fist thing. Yeah. Um, and I tap here. That's easier for me. Some people have different size chest. They don't like, to, and you can reach across. Some people love doing that. I don't like reaching across. So you, there's different options for that. And, and once you do the karate chop point, um, you do something called a setup statement with it. This, even though I fill in the blank with your feeling, I love it. I feel anxious about coronavirus and leaving the house. Yeah. So you do that three times and then you put that away. No more, no more karate chops, uh, until you start a whole new emotion. And then you okay. go through top of the head to underarm, to the armpit, um, a few times and then you check in and then you start over with that. So we can do the statement. So generally, um, and when you're doing it by yourself, you're going to not have someone repeating it back to you or, or feeling, telling you what to say. But, um, but this is just to give you a sense of what it looks like to do a tapping session. And we'll just do a few minutes. There's not going to be, yeah. um, we're not going to probably have any like major breakthroughs right now. I don't actually know how much anxiety you're feeling about <laughs> being outside right now. But I know, it's a painful situation every day with the coronavirus. It's true. It's true. Um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of start. So, um, Leslie, how, how strong is your anxiety about leaving the house during coronavirus? Um, I'd say a six. Okay, and, and Leslie's on quarantine right now, so. Yes, <laughs> yes. Special, had, special circumstances. Yeah, yeah, I had a patient who had coronavirus, and um, it was not diagnosed until a few days later, so. Um, thankfully, I was wearing a mask, and thankfully, I'm on day 13, Oh, so, nice. I know. I know I, I'm like so close to being done. Um, yeah. So I'm awesome. not as anxious anymore, but the world seems to be imploding about it. So I'm like, right. this is a perfect opportunity to talk about every, like the whole nation seems to be having a panic attack. Yeah. <laughs> so figured uh, tapping would be a good thing to start on. Okay, great. So, and, and can you say where you feel that anxiety in your body? Is it possible to identify that right now? I feel it in my chest. It's just like this, like right here, like, you know, like, I, like I have to take deep breaths when I remember it, like, okay, leaving the house, everyone's, there's no toilet paper. If I run out of toilet paper, <laughs> what am I going to do if I need toilet paper? Okay, good. So um, if, yeah. if you can't identify where it is in your body, that's okay. That's not like quite advanced, but that's like intermediate. So if you're not able to identify where you feel it in your body, 
don't worry about it, but that's just a nice way to check in. Oh, I don't feel that heaviness in my chest anymore, or it feels less heavy. Um, okay, so even though I'm feeling anxiety about leaving the house during this pandemic. Even though I'm feeling anxiety about leaving the house during this pandemic. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Even though I'm feeling anxiety about leaving the house during the coronavirus pandemic. Even though I'm feeling anxiety about leaving the house during a coronavirus pandemic. I love and accept myself exactly as I am in this moment. I love and accept myself exactly as I am in this moment. Even though I feel anxiety that, uh, about leaving the house during this coronavirus mayhem. Even though I feel anxiety about leaving the house during this coronavirus mayhem. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. All right, top of the head. I have anxiety. I have anxiety. I have so much anxiety. I have so much anxiety. I feel this anxiety in my chest. I feel this anxiety in my chest. I feel anxious when I think about leaving the house during coronavirus. I feel anxious about leaving the house during the coronavirus. So much anxiety. So much anxiety. I have some fear about leaving the house. I have some fear about leaving the house. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. What if I run out of toilet paper? What if I run out of toilet paper? What if I can't leave my house for another two weeks? What if I can't leave my house for another two weeks? What if something happens to my family members? What if something happens to my family members? I have all this anxiety. I have all this anxiety. So much anxiety. So much anxiety. I don't even know where I can get good information. I don't even know where I can get good information. I'll, every time I look for more information, I get even more anxious. Every time I look for more information, I get even more anxious. All this anxiety. All this anxiety. I feel anxious. I feel anxious. Okay, so let's pause. And you can go through one more round of that. Um, and then usually two to three rounds and then we stop and we pause, we take a deep breath. <sighs> so, and then I always say, what came up for you? This is a reset. How are you feeling? Did any images, memories, visions come up? Any aha moments, new emotions? Uh, because while you're tapping, your subconscious is kind of like free to express itself and it may send you messages. You might be like, oh, I just had this weird memory of my third grade teacher telling me that, you know, I wasn't a good student. Whatever. Yeah. You may have some random memory from your past. It's never random. So always take note of it and, and take some time to think about it. So what came up for you, Leslie? Okay. Well, I mean, you, the thing is what's great about tapping with you is that you bring in a couple extra things that I didn't think about. Um, or didn't have on probably in my original script, which is um, my family. So like I told you, my parents were planning on traveling and they still want to travel, but now there's like this travel ban and it's like, well, they're elderly and everything you read is like, what do you believe about how this coronavirus is affecting people and the elderly and what age groups? And then can you travel? Can you not? All this stuff is being canceled. Um, so that kind of was like a, ooh, you know, I just kind of felt that like, yeah, I am anxious about my family. Um, okay. more than just leaving the house. It's like, oh, no, no, I'm anxious every time I read something. I'm anxious every time I think about my family. Um, so then I start to maybe think about like, oh, my family's, my parents are getting older. Their health isn't what they used to be. Things like that kind of come up. Okay, great. So, so that's important. So, you know, anxiety about coronavirus is a huge chunk. Yeah. <laughs> so many different components to it. And if you just type, I'm, you know, or the tap on, I'm anxious about coronavirus, you're not going to really get as far, mm -hmm. it, may, it may calm you down in the moment, but you're not gonna really like get to the bottom of it because there's so many components. So it's good to be specific. So if your anxiety has shifted from, I'm afraid to leave the house to much more strongly, I'm a, I have anxiety about my parents, you might even wanna start over and say, even though I'm anxious about the effect coronavirus is gonna have on my parents' health and travel, mm -hmm. I love and accept myself and then do a new tapping sequence okay. So it's the same emotion, but it's a different context of the emotion. Okay. Um, if it's a different emotion, then you're going to want to start over with the, with the point. But if you're just like, oh yeah, I had some thoughts about my parents. I'm still really nervous about leaving the house. Then we would just keep going. We'd be like, I'm nervous about leaving the house. I don't have toilet paper. People are crazy out there. What if there's a mob, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Whatever. so then you would keep going with that and keep checking in every few rounds. So that's, I think a pretty good, um, and it's, it's great that like something new came up for you. Like something I said triggered you or, or resonated. 
that's important. And that might be even deeper and, and something more important to, uh, to discuss or to work on. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that I've noticed for sure in just about every session we do is that what I think is the problem is not what I think it is, which is why tapping is so great because it really shows you like, no way, what I'm really anxious about is my parents getting older and their health has been getting poorer and poorer. And maybe I'm worried about toilet paper and I'm worried about the mobs, but really what deep down I didn't realize make, is making me anxious is my parents and them and their health. Yeah. So that's why I just love this technique. So <laughs> stuff. it's powerful stuff. So yeah, definitely. Um, when you're by yourself, you'll just be reading the script and, and the more basic you keep it, the better when you're by yourself, because you're not, you don't have training and you don't have to have training to be able to do it, but just keep it super simple. Don't get too fancy or anything like that. Just what your, what the emotion is, where you feel in the body, the circumstances when you feel it mm -hmm. and repeat them. You can repeat them the whole time. You can repeat the same head, you know, head to arm, underarm sequence three times verbatim. You don't have to change any of it Okay. from those three times and it'll still work. It's pretty cool that way. Okay. So say I start feeling better. I'm like, phew, my anxiety's dropping. I'm going to start infusing the positive. What are some good phrases to use? Like, even though I'm, do I, do I start with like, even though I'm anxious? You don't do, we don't do a, um, you, when you start tapping the positive, let's say you get down to like a zero, one or a two, or maybe even a three, if you were like at a 10 and you're down to a three with the anxiety, then you just say, I've had this. So we can just do it. Um, I have some anxiety about going outside during coronavirus. I have some anxiety about going outside during coronavirus. But I know that I'm doing my best to keep myself educated. But I know that I'm doing the best to keep myself educated. There's a lot to take in right now. There's a lot to take in right now. And things are changing very quickly. And things are changing very quickly. But I know that I have the ability to practice good hand hygiene. But I know that I have the ability to practice good hand hygiene. And I'm going to keep my, uh, you know, I'm going to practice social distancing as much as I can. And I'm going to practice social distancing as much as I can. And I'm going to do what I can to control the factors that I, uh, that are within my control. And I'm going to do what I can to control the factors that are within my control. And I'm going to spend my, I'm, I'll be open to spending my energy on ways to boost my immunity. And I am open to finding ways and spending my time to. <laughs> I'll be open to finding ways to, um, to, I'll be open to using my energy towards positive oh. rather than anxiety. And I'm open to finding ways to be positive rather than anxious. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. You know, and then you could say, you know, I'm going to focus on getting plenty of sleep. I'm going to focus on getting plenty of sleep. I'm going to take vitamin C every day. I'm going to take vitamin C every day. I'm going to make sure to be a good citizen and not go outside. If I have a cough, I'm going to make sure to be a good citizen and not go outside. If I have a cough, so any of that stuff. And you can just say, I'm feeling all the anxiety leaving my body. I'm feeling all the anxiety leaving my body. I notice the anxiety is leaving my body. I notice the anxiety is leaving my body. Such a relief to feel less anxious. It's such a relief to feel less anxious. I feel hopeful about my ability to handle this situation. I feel hopeful about my ability to handle the situation. I have more power than I realize. I have more power than I realize. And then that's something to that effect. And you can... Okay. Pick one or two of those examples and repeat those over and over again. It doesn't have to be fancy. I was just trying to give some different examples. Sure, yeah. Those are great. And you're just like, yes, I'm going. So <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like I got this, I got this coronavirus licked. Yeah, yeah. It's just if you're like lighter, you know, it's like, yeah. I mean, I wasn't that anxious about it before, but like, you know, it's like there's a little bit, you know, and then even just doing a little bit of tapping, it's like, oh, you know, I'm not like and I I'm, you know, like you said, you know, where do you feel it? I'm like in my chest. I'm like, no, I feel like. I can take a good deep breath. You know, I, I can do this. I have the power to do what I have um, control over and I'm going to control that. I have plenty of hand sanitizer. And if not, I've got vodka I can spray on my hands. That works too. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, th the key is you always want to check in. So now like theoretically what I would do, I'd be like, if we had shifted gears to you're anxious about your family, I'd be like, how are you feeling about anxious about going outside? <clears throat> a lot of times when you shift into something new, and you go back to the original one, the original one is gone. 
it feels much better because you've tackled what's really causing it. So um, just always remember every time you stop, um, I, when we checked in, you said, oh, this resonated me about my, with, my, with my parents. I didn't really check in to see how strong your anxiety was at that time, but that's something you always want to make sure to do um, so you can monitor the progress of it. Okay. All right. So you mentioned a website. You also have retreats that you usually do. You live in Atlanta if anyone wants to go to you or you can do one-on-one -on -one sessions like this. So if you could talk again about your, your website and your courses. Sure, yeah, so um, the one-on-one the -on -one tapping sessions can be done, Leslie and I do them virtually because she lives in Omaha, so we, uh, we do them so they're very coronavirus friendly, except you have to touch your face, so we're gonna like, wash hands before and wash hands after. Yeah. Um, but so we can do those on Zoom or, um, or in, in person. Um, the, my website is jillweiner.com, W-E-N-E-R.com, and then there's information there about tapping, meditation, my retreats. If you're a doctor, if you're in healthcare, I have a whole separate website, meditationinmedicine.com, but there's going to be a link to that on jillweiner.com, so you can go directly to that. My next retreat is um, uh, Women in Healthcare uh, Meditation Retreat at Miraval Spa in Arizona. In, uh, I am totally going to sign up for that now. <laughs> Since my other conference got canceled, I'm totally going to do that again. That was that's amazing. awesome. So that's how Leslie and I met. She came up. Yeah, life changing. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. And like part of it's what I do, but part of it's Miraval. I mean, like a huge part of it is Miraval. And then the third part of it is the amazing women who come. So that's for women in healthcare. I did have a retreat in Bali coming up in June, but we canceled that. So, um, but I do retreats also for non-healthcare people. And if you want to learn to meditate, I have online courses. And, and when I, I, I have versions that are accredited for continuing education for doctors and nurses and all, all sorts of healthcare professionals. And then I also have courses that have no CME accreditation. It's the exact same course, but there's just less medical jargon for uh, regular people who may be dealing with diabetes in their own life, but have no other connection to healthcare. So those are all going to be on, on my website as well. The technique is called the rest technique. I, I the live version of my course I teach here in Atlanta and, and on retreats. So um, they're both incredible and, uh, They'll both get you meditating on your own in no time. Yeah, we didn't even talk about your um, your Vedic meditation, but I do that too every day, and it's been wonderful. I'm trying to get my husband to learn, <laughs> and um, I can just do it anywhere. It's fantastic. So the meditation is also a wonderful technique for anxiety or um, just just life in general. So, yeah, the meditation it's like a it's like a global like it's going to shift your level from like here to here. And the tapping's like a spot. The meditation's like a general cleaning out of the <laughs> system. And the tapping is the spot cleaning. The tapping's yeah. got a specific issue and a specific issue. They work really, really well together because no one modality is going to fix all your problems. I've learned that the mm -hmm. easy way and the hard way. So, um, <laughs> but doing as much as you can with it, with the techniques that resonate with you um, are, are really going to um, get you a lot of progress. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this. You have been amazing. You're welcome. Um, I yeah, hope you're right. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thanks okay. for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.